just painted my nails and the colour you see it's one of those trendy trendy nude colours but it makes me look like my hands are dead like my hands have been underwater for the last five years Ugh. hi it's alice from more than toast and today i'm going to be talking about divorce now um i was really young i think i think i was young when i got divorced i was uh 27 when we broke up and then when my divorce finally came through i was 29 so i mean that's what everyone wants to do before they're 30 you know when you have a 30 before 30 list i think getting divorced is probably top of most people's um so what did i wish i'd known though about the whole experience before i did it uh it was obviously Quite a painful experience no one because no one really wants to get divorced no one sits down you know to sign the register and goes oh i really hope in three years time this bit of paper is going to get ripped up and replaced with a uh, what, what do you even call it the final that final divorce decree nice i nice 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 i i don't know it's latin um but no one goes into a marriage thinking that you're going to get divorced and for that reason, um, I was terrified of it. I was terrified of getting divorced. I was terrified of admitting that my relationship had failed and that I was wrong when all those people bought me lovely wedding presents. And no, it was just, it was a horrible, um, it was a horrible thing. And we talked about it a lot before we did it. And I think if we, well, definitely, if I hadn't been so scared of being divorced, the big, the big D, then we would have done it a lot sooner. But what I'd wish I'd known is that it's really nothing to be scared of. I would, I mean, I was still very young. I was 27 and I'd walk into, I had a six month old baby. I'd walk into a room of wives, of women, and I would really be scared of their pity. And I think I got quite a lot of it or like them, them looking down on me because I wasn't with the father of my children anymore and that was that that was a horrible in hindsight that was a horrible thing to be worried about when you've got a six month old baby and a two year old and you're pretty much worrying about every single other thing in your life as well you don't need the added stress and the added kind of sadness i guess of worrying about being divorced i wish i could tell women who are thinking about getting divorced or who are worried about getting divorced to just don't worry about it. I'm not gonna judge you. The people who do judge you for it are not worth even giving your thoughts to. The second thing I wish I'd known about getting divorced is that you can do it on your own. I think that as humans, when you're fighting so hard for a relationship to work or you're pushing, you're working on something so much, you forget how much energy that takes out of the rest of your life. So when you have a relationship that's causing you a lot of stress and a lot of unhappiness, you forget that once the pressure of that is taken off you, I mean, I thought I could cure disease. I could, you know, fix Donald Trump when that pressure was taken off me because I suddenly had all this headspace to do with what I wanted. And I think, I think I'm allowed to say this, I think I did the right thing. I channeled all mine towards my children's happiness and my work and trying to reignite my friendships that have been left by the wayside but i never would want if i could do it again i wouldn't want to worry that i couldn't do it because i can do it once you've taken away that that, that very sad marriage there was so much time to do everything else and i guess you could apply that message to finances um again i was bloody bricking it that i'd go from being at home i used to write a couple of things on my blog a month i don't about 400 or 500 pounds a month. Uh, obviously I had Hux who was six months old and then the rest of the income was from my husband. And then I just went to, well, I, I had a bit of child support but it wasn't like having a household budget that you have when the husband's in the house. Um, but again, I put all the, I had a couple of tricky months actually because I had some debts to pay off, but I went all full pelt on making my business work. And I know I was very lucky that I was able to do that from home at the time. Um, and then when Hux was a little bit older, I did go back and work in an office for a while because the money was going to be better. Um, but it worked. It worked. I was, I mean, no one was more surprised than me at the time that I managed to not only 
survive but thrive there is also help with tax credits child tax credits that you get as a single parent and there are lots and lots of calculators online that will help you work out what you should be getting from the government i also wish that i hadn't worried so much about the children and that's that's a horrible thing to say but i i was terrified that not having a dad in their house would affect them or would affect them in some way that was um comparable to their peers or you know that they would they'd grow up not being the children they should be because there's not a dad in the house but they're the best children i know they are seriously the best children i know and i have to say i think the fact that my ex-husband and i broke up when they were so young was a bit of a saving grace but as long as you don't i guess don't bring any of that negative energy and the um the bad relationship juju into the house uh my ex-husband and i are very careful to if we have a falling out which does happen even though we're quite respectful of one another we make sure it's kept away from the kids and there was a time where we had i don't know three months where our relationship was a bit rocky um but we did all of that over email and i said to him we would had one massive row at home and i said we can't do this let's get on email because this is just not going to work um and it was a bit strange for a while when he did the kids hang handover but just as long as you're not you know bringing that arguing and that stress into their lives then i think that's a lot more valuable than having two parents who are at home but they're at each other's throats all the time that is something that we did not want to do at all and i think that's more detrimental to children than not having a, a dad at home or spending half the time with mum and half the time with dad because then they get real quality time with their parents which is really important for me and for my ex-husband probably the last thing i'd say is that when my ex-husband left i was really worried a that i wouldn't find a man b that i wouldn't be able to survive without one because i'd been with him since i was 18. um i think the first point here is you don't actually need a man i found life quite a lot less stressful with just running the house me and the children there was no other man there was no man to cook for there was no man to pick up after i mean there is lots about the mental load that woman carries comparatively to a man especially in a situation where you've got children and with my ex-husband moving out that just took that away there was no stressing over the fact that i asked him to put up that picture Four weeks ago and it's still lying on the floor next to the fireplace i just did it myself there was no worrying that he hadn't got the bins out on time um so the bin men had left without the bin bags again so we had like three weeks worth of bin bags in the garage i just did it myself so there was no like pressure or stress over asking someone else to do bits and pieces around the house um i just do it all myself which i guess some in some ways is counterintuitive if you have a very very on it and helpful husband or a very very on it and you've, you've got a really you know a very equal household which by the way we all should but it just doesn't work out that way um so it took that whole pressure of having someone else to look after or having someone else expected to do half of their share around the house it took all that away i didn't need a man i don't need a man i'd much rather be happy by myself without a man than in an unhappy relationship with one and i think that's a really important lesson and an important uh, thought to keep in your mind if you're worried that you can't do it alone because you can i also worried that i wouldn't meet another man or that i wouldn't meet another man um who would want to have children who aren't his and i have actually in my four four and a half years nearly five years single i have come across a lot of men who don't want to have children that belong to another man and who do freak out at the possibility of being a stepdad but they're not the right ones they are and that's a really really good barometer i think to to tell if they're the right man for you the men who don't want to deal with your children are not going to be the men that you want to spend your life with and it's as simple as that and you will find one to fall in love with it might take five years it might take one year um but even if if you don't in that time you don't need one i think the last five years well as i met my ex-husband when i was 18 the last five years i've had some of the most interesting um and not so interesting and weird and wonderful relationships it's been a brilliant learning experience and i'm really glad that if i do settle down that i've gone through all that because i think it's been it's been fantastic
so if you're getting divorced or if you're thinking about getting divorced or if your friends getting divorced so many of my friends are getting divorced um i think just don't worry about it take comfort in the fact that yes it will be hard but you can do it and i hope that me saying that having gone through it really helps to ease you into whatever situation you're about to get into click to subscribe on my videos that aren't just going to be about divorce